Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hallelujah. Well, today, like I was just stating a few moments ago, what's leading up to today's lesson is uh, the statement I made last week. So we're going we're gonna to deal with that. I got a couple inboxes. I got a couple of people that were, um, uh, I guess, kind of, you know, like, not upset, but I guess they were, they were saying um, um, they may they have took issue with what I said, and I said like that. But the reason I said what I said, which is I'm not concerned about the Las Vegas incident as much as I am concerned about the things that go on with our with our people, is because we have a history. I'm not just discrimination, but we have a history of mass murder, and we and we <laughs> we have, we as Israelites, so-called black people, so-called African Americans, we have a short memory, and sometimes we have to be reminded of the things that went on without taking a broad stroke and saying oh we've been through so much discrimination we've been through so much uh, uh hatred and murder and death sometimes we need to pinpoint those things so to, to today's lesson is um heathen kingdom is a israelite hell heathen kingdom is a israelite hell well, let's go to Matthew 11 and 12. Heathen, key, heathen kingdom is an Israelite hell. That's the name of today's lesson. And what we, want to, we want to go to Matthew 11 and 12 first. Matthew 11 and 12. Because we're gonna, we want to get into some historical, uh, historical content. Because, like I said, we tend to forget. We tend to forget the things that happened to our people. Well, let me remind you today. <laughs> you all ready? Matthew eleven and twelve. And from the days of John the Mercer until the kingdom until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force let me read it again and from the days of john the immerser until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force the question has now become in light of the las vegas incident is the 64-year-old Stephen Paddock the worst mass murderer in the long, violent history of America? That's the question. Does the Las Vegas incident qualify as the deadliest or the most deadliest mass shooting incident? That is the question. That is the question. And one, as CNN and MSNBC and Fox News and all of the other major news outlets, they would say, yes, it's the deadliest because they are excluding blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. So let us see. Let us see the history of said events. Remember. The name of our kingdom was called the kingdom of heaven and it suffered violence and the violent ones took our kingdom of heaven by force. You understand? You understand? Okay. All right. Let's go down into the history of events. 
the Black Wall Street Massacre. I brought that up last week too, as well. <coughs> but I discovered, <clears throat> I discovered, upon talking to a group of young men and older men, it was a, some older gentlemen there too. They had no idea what Black Wall Street was, the Black Wall Street Massacre. They have never even heard of it. One young man said, "Uh, I never heard that in school." They don't teach us stuff like that. And he said, I've never even heard. I don't know what you're talking about. Then he went and researched it for himself and came back the next day and said, I looked up, looked it up. I watched the documentary, documentary on it. He said, I couldn't believe it, that that actually happened. And it dawned on me that our young people don't know these things. They're not privy, privy to this type of information. So let me go into some detail right, right quick. Black Wall Street Massacre. On June 1st, 1921, white rioters looted and burned the black area of Tulsa, Oklahoma, known as Black Wall Street. Angry at the economic success of blacks in the area, the area, uh, the area became known as Black Wall Street, uh, because of the number of successful businesses and wealthy black inhabitants. White Tulsans accused a black man of raping a girl and attack and attack the area. While white citizens used dynamite and planes to bomb the city, leaving more than 8,000 people homeless. Did I just say, I just said, we just went over this last week. Talked about this last week leaving 8,000 people homeless. Eyewitness accounts charged that the vast majority of the people killed estimates a range from 80 to 300 people died because of the city's law enforcement officers deputizing every able-bodied white man and handed out weapons from the city's armory. The historian Scott Green's Worth describes it this way. Shortly after the fighting had broke out at the courthouse, a large number of whites, many of whom had only a little while earlier been members of the would-be lynch mob, gathered outside of the police headquarters on 2nd Street. There, perhaps as many as 500 white men and boys were sworn in by police officers as special deputies. Some were provided with, long, with uh, badges and ribbons, indicating their new status. Uh, many, it appears, also were giving special instructions, according to Laurel, Drew, uh, Laurel G. Buck, a white bricklayer who was sworn in as one of these special deputies. A police officer bluntly told him to get a gun and get a nigger. Shortly thereafter, whites began breaking into downtown sporting goods stores, pawn shops, hardware stores, stealing and borrowing, and some would later claim, claim guns and ammunition. A Tulsa police officer helped to dole out the guns that were taken from the store. More bloodshed soon followed as whites began gunning down any African Americans that were discovered downtown. There is no official death toll, but most historians agree that the count was around 250 because many African Americans were buried in mass graves while others fled the city. No one was ever convicted of this of a crime. So there was no white people ever, ever convicted of a crime. That was just one massacre in the year 1921, June 1st. That's when it began. All right. Let's go over another one. Let's go over another one. This is the, the Colfax massacre. The Colfax massacre. On April 13th, 1873, black people in Colfax, Louisiana, began gathering at the courthouse 
and digging trenches. Now, see, the reason why I'm going over these historical events is because people have said that the Vegas incident was the worst incident in, in the history of America. But we are proving them wrong with, with history. Proving with, pardon me? When did you say this happened? 1863? This happened in 1873. It's called the Colfax Massacre. The C O L F A X. Colfax Massacre. On April 13th, 1873, black people in Colfax, Louisiana began gathering at the courthouse and digging trenches. They were afraid that whites, disgruntled uh, by Republican rule and, at, and a court decision that allowed blacks to vote, were about to attack. A civilian militia of angry white men surrounded the courthouse and convinced the blacks to hand over their weapons and surrender. The black citizens complied. And that's when the massacre started. You hand over your guns and they start killing. As many as 40, to 40 times more blacks were killed than whites. They invaded the courthouse and killed unarmed men. They hunted down women and children trying to hide in the surrounding woods. They dumped bodies into the river. They took 50 prisoners, but later summarily killed them one by one. The, histori the historian Eric Enor called it the bloodiest single incident of racial carnage in the Re Reconstruction era. At least 150 black citizens were killed. Three, three white men died. No one was ever convicted of a crime. No one was ever convicted of a crime. Let's get another one. <laughs> this is the the Thadox massacre. In 1887, nearly 100,000 black sugar plantation workers in Thidox, Louisiana, decided to protest their unfair treatment and the holding of workers' wages until the end of the season. And you know that ain't true, unless they were sharecropping. <laughs> okay, until the end of the season, forcing them into a kind of uh, indentured servitude uh, this is after uh, slavery was supposed to be declared eman uh, emancipated in 1887 okay uh, in response Judge Taylor uh, Betty Judge Taylor Betty who owned a sugar plantation declared martial law and paid a 300 man private militia to keep the peace. The militia ordered every black person in the city to show a pass or leave. The blacks who didn't were rounded up with their families and executed. In all about 35 in all about 35 and 100 blacks were killed. The count is not official because some bodies were burned. No one ever, no one ever was convicted. This is the Elaine Massacre. See, we could keep going on and on and on. This here, this one here is the Elaine Massacre. In 1919, Black sharecroppers gathered outside of Elaine, Ar uh, Arkansas, uh, to listen to Robert L. Hill explain how sharecropping was unfair and to advocate for voting rights. The meeting was regarded by union. Uh, the the meeting was guarded by union troops, but when but when the white men showed up at the meeting, shots were exchanged. The sheriff then called 
for a for a, a the sheriff then called for a posse to fi to find the people responsible. The sheriff did call for a posse to find the people that were responsible. 500 to 1,000 white men rushed in from across, the, from across the country to hunt down the killers and to quell the Negro insurrection. When it was over, 237 black people were dead. 237 black people were dead. Then all white jury, uh, then an all white jury charged and sentenced 12 other blacks to death. Another 36 pled guilty to second degree murder, and 67 were convicted of other crimes and put to death. Three white people died. Three white people. All right, let me just run off a few more. Uh, this is the 1864 Fort Pillow Massacre in Tennessee when Confederate trip, uh, troops mowed down 164 black soldiers who were surrendering. So, in 1864, the Fort Pillow in Tennessee, there was 164 black troops that were given that were giving up. The Confederates killed them anyway. Because that it was officially because that it is officially a, a war crime. Uh, the same goes for the 1864. Saltville massacre in in Virginia. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah. The Achillette massacre of, of Native Americans in California in 1854 doesn't count, I guess, either, because they were killed uh, for their land. That was in 1864, the same time the blacks were killed in 1864. Uh, let's get one more. Some say as many as 150 were killed in the Rosewood incident. That one was made famous by that movie Rosewood. Y'all remember that? 150 were killed in Rosewood, Florida in 1923. Uh, but the official count, they say were six. <laughs> you see that number? The difference in that number? The mass deaths, the, the mass deaths of Philia, uh, Philadelphia's MOVE headquarters in 1985 uh, didn't make the list of the, mass, of the mass murder mass murder list or the greatest uh, mass murder list either it was called you remember uh, Philadelphia's move that move uh, group it was a, it was a uh, African American uh, group or uh, black black group that was called move in uh, 1985 in Philadelphia uh, the headquarters were uh, um, Invaded by the FBI, I believe it was the FBI and uh, ATF in 1985. And uh, let's see here. In 19, I didn't make the list because law enforcement officers bombed the men, women, and children living there. And the, t I knew you. And the time whites nearly wiped out. The Wyatt Native American tribe in 1860 doesn't belong on the mass murder list either because the Wyatts were killed with knives, hatchets, as well as guns. So that was in uh, 1860. All right. All right. Let's move on. 
So those are just a few more uh, mass murderer uh, murders that happened on American soil that uh, did make the worst list in America or the worst mass murder list in America. Okay, let's go to Rebecca two. Go to Rebecca two. But some seem to believe that this man is not who he is. But the Bible is very clear. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the ones who are violent took the kingdom of heaven by force. Habakkuk 2 I'm going to start at verse 3. Y'all, You all have it? Y'all ready? Okay. Rebecca 2, verse 3. Start at verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. So the prophet here writes, the vision is yet for a point in time, meaning it is coming at the time at the time that the prophecy is going to happen. That's the time that the vision is going to, you're going to see the prophet come into manifest itself. Or manifest itself. Uh, but at the end, it shall speak. And when you see it, you're going to know that this is the prophecy of the Most High, or this is the, the prophecy that he's about to tell you. And it won't and it won't lie. And not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not right upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Let me read verse 4 again. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is is not upright in him but the just shall live by faith hold that we're coming back to Rebecca we're going to Isaiah 13 and 11 Isaiah 13 and 11 let me pull it I want to pull it up on my other tablet here Isaiah 13 and 11. You ready? Isaiah 13 and 11. We're going back to Rebecca, so hopefully y'all was you all was holding that. Um, and I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Go back to Rebecca. Verse four: Behold, his soul, which is lifted up and lifted up, is not upright in him. So here, the prophet is telling us about a certain man, a certain individual, his his attitude, his character, the essence of a man, or the essence of the man. So what we have to do is we have to figure out what man is he talking? What man is he talking about? He's talking about as uh, Isaiah just said. The, that wicked man we discussed last week who was that wicked man right we discussed that last week who the wicked man is so uh who want to shut the door so let's keep going verse five 
Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. I'm going to say it again. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. Remember, we're trying to describe the essence of a man or the essence, the essence of that man or the wicked man. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. Who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death. And this man can never be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and keepeth unto him all people. So here, there, there you go. There are some clues right there. There are some clues. Who heap unto themselves all people? What country do that? America. Who? America. America. Who gather unto himself all nations? Who do that? There are settled, there are clues in this verse to tell you who this man is. It tells you who this man is. And when it says to transgress by wine, that wine is going into lies. Okay? That wine is going into lies. How do you prove that? Go to Micah 2 and 11. Micah 2 and 11. So we can prove. Chapter 2, verse 11. So we can prove what it means by wine. What do you mean by wine? Are you ready? If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood, falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people. Let me read it again. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink. So to prophesy of, of wine that goes into lies and falsehood. Lies and falsehood. So when Habakkuk says in uh, verse, what verse is we at? Five? No, five. Verse five. When, when Habakkuk uh, go, uh, talks about in verse five, the transgressive by wine is talking about lies. What is what does it mean to transgress? Sin. That's right. It means to break God's laws. It's to break God's laws. All right. Let's go. Let's let's go back to the back of back of back of six. Back of six. I mean, a uh, uh, back of two and six. Y'all okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Rebecca 2, verse 6. Shall not all these take up, take up a parable against him and a stunning proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increase that which is, is not his. I want to read that first part again. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a, and a tunning and a tunning proverb against him and say woe to him that increaseth that which that which is not his how long and to him that laden himself with thick clay go back to let's go to Isaiah right quick Isaiah 10 and 13 Hallelujah. Isaiah 10 and 13. I'll wait for everyone to get it. I don't want to move too fast. You almost there? You got it? All right. Isaiah 10 and 13. 
For he saith, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bonds of the people, and I have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. We're talking about the essence of the man. We're talking about the essence of that man who prophesied lies, who prophesied lies and gather all peoples into himself. That same man who cut down our forefathers, some of that history we read today. Some of that history we read today. Go back to Habakkuk 2. We're going to go to verse 7. Y'all stay with me. I'm just laying down some groundwork right now. Laying down these scriptures right now. We're going to bring it all together. What verses we at? We was on to verse 7? Okay, verse 7. Shall they not rise up suddenly that that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shall be for booties unto them. Can somebody, anybody understand that scripture? I'm going to read it again. Let me know if you understand that scripture. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shall be for booties unto them what is booties treasures right mm -hmm. treasures yeah. can anybody can anybody know what that scripture mean no you know what that scripture mean no the what? The spoils. The spoils of war. What you think, Noah? They shall rise up suddenly that shall bite thee. To bite someone is to hurt somebody, right? They shall rise up suddenly to hurt you. And awake that shall vex you. To vex you means to bother you, to irritate you, to, right? To call to inflict pain upon you. That's to vex you. Right? So who do you think is going to rise up? And first of all, who is who? what place are we talking about? Because we just read it in verse um, uh, 4. We just identified the place. I read over it, but I thought everybody knew who I was talking about. Well, the sister did say America. She did say America. So if we're talking about America, and it said, they, and verse 7 said, they shall rise up suddenly, that shall, that shall bite thee. And we understand that that means to hurt you. To bite you means to hurt you. Right? Y'all following me? Yeah. So who do you think is talking about that's going to rise up suddenly to hurt America or to vex America? Go back to the bottom of verse 4. Go back to the bottom of verse 4. Uh, uh, sorry, go back to the bottom of verse 5. But gather unto, uh, but gathereth unto him all nations and keep unto him all people. So all of these different nationalities that's living in America right now, go to verse uh, 7, that America has destroyed. America is at war with seven different Arabic countries right now. There were seven. There was a war with seven different Arabic countries when Obama was in office. They were bombing seven different Arabic countries. The same ones that can't come. Before. The same ones that they're trying. That Trump is trying to get a a, a, a ban for right now. You you know we have Koreans over here, right? We have Koreans over here. Well, you know we have had went to war at one time with Japan, right? And bombed Japan. 
Remember that? Well, some, well, some most of us is not old enough to remember that, but we, we remember it. Um, who else? Who else have we been at war with? And I don't mean European countries, non-European countries. Well, we can include European countries, like Germany. You know, we have a, we have problems with Syria. Russia. We have problems with Russia. We have problems with Syria. Venezuela. The problems with Venezuela, right? We have problems. America have problems with a lot of different countries around the world. A lot of them. We we have we only mentioned a few countries that America has had problems with. The scripture says that um, that they shall rise up suddenly. America's policy has always been we uh, we heap all peoples into ourselves. We let all these immigrants. That's what America says. Come on, come on in. Everybody but you Haitians <laughs> and you and you Cubans, you know they don't let Haitians and Cubans in, but everybody else can come. Those people can be heaped unto themselves. They can uh, unto America over here. Come over here. The Bible says, Rebecca two and seven. I didn't hear you. Right, right, right. But a lot of a lot of mark though. Who is those people on the raft out there? You know, they be floating out there on them rafts, them rubber rafts. Don't well, let them people in this country. That's that's what they do. Yep. So um, uh, Habakkuk two and seven says, "They shall rise up suddenly, and bite thee, and hurt, and hurt, and hurt you, and awake, and uh, and awake that shall vex." And thou shalt be for booties unto them. Right? Verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. It tells you right there. Why they're going to hurt you. Why they're going to vex you. And why they're going to rise up suddenly against you. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. All the raiment of the people shall be spoiled. Uh, shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood and for the violence of the land. We just we just talked about the uh, the historical, we just read some historical content or the historical record of what they've done to our people over here in this land. The mass murder of what they've done to our people. And they hold themselves not guilty behind it. They don't care. They don't care. But Yah says he cares. Yah says he cares. Verse 8 again. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. This is a prophecy. It's going to happen. Let me say it again. It's going to happen. I remember when uh, uh, they they did Desert Storm. I think I believe it was Desert Storm. No, no, that's that's not Desert Storm. It was uh, the one where Bush did Operation Iraqi Freedom. Is that the name of the war? It was. After nine eleven, okay, I remember. I remember uh, Saddam Hussein. He said, "You you sending your soldiers over here, but my soldiers are already there." I re I remember those words. He said that my soldiers are already there, meaning there are uh, Iraq Iraqis in this country, and I'm uh, hey. I, I can't be if you got if you're gonna be scared to say stuff, you might as well just not be a teacher because you can't be scared to say stuff. I'm just telling like it is. There are people from that part of the world, from Iraq, from Syria, from Kuwait, from those uh, areas, from uh, Yemen, from those that part of the world that are here that are waiting for the word. And when they get the word, boom, 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 boom. Is what the sound is going to be. They're going to go to war. I believe that. And we just read it. <laughs> we just read it. They're going to wake suddenly. And boom, 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 boom. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's what's going to happen. Uh, let's read verse 8 again. Because thou hast spoiled... Many nations, all the raiment of the people shall spoil thee. 
because of men's blood and from the violence of the land of the city and of the and of all that dwell therein we're going to be spoiled plundered uh, treasures is going to be taken a prize loot meaning uh, meaning something taken from another by force or for or by craft that's what spoiled me verse 9 warn to him that covered and uh an evil covet covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high that he may be delivered from the power of evil verse 10 Thou hast consulted shame in thy house by cutting off many people. Let me read that part again. <laughs> Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people. This is the essence of America. And has sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall. For the stone shall cry out of the wall. And the beam out of the timber shall answer it. That's destruction. How do a, how do a stone cry out of a wall? If a, if a stone was to bust out of a wall, that's something that blew up. And the beam shall answer it. If a beam comes out of a building, that means if, it's, if it, the timber comes out of a beam, that means it blew up. Something broke up. It broke down. Sound like a bomb to me. Verse 11, and the stone shall uh, cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and established a city by iniquity. Verse 12 again, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and established a city by iniquity. Give me Genesis 9 and 6. Nine verse six. Yah says he will destroy that city that was built in blood. Y'all should have 9 and 6 marked. Verse 6. Who sheddeth man's blood? By man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Yah made he man. So Yah said, this is Yah's judgment. It's righteous judgment. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood. If you kill a man, by man you should be killed. Because you don't have a right to touch a man's life. That life is yours. That life is yours. All right, let's go over to Isaiah 34. Let's start at verse 8. 34? Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. And we're going to start at verse, verse 8. You got it? We want to say shalom to everyone that's watching online. Shabbat shalom. You're welcome to join us here at Israelite Nation. You got it? All right, Isaiah 34. I'm going to start at verse 8, okay? For, for it is the day of Yah's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. The year of recompense. That means that Yah has a time plan for payback. Right? 
We talked about recompense last week and reward. We read it again, verse 8. It is the day of Yah's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. And the stream thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the land therefore shall become burning pitch it shall not be quenched night nor day the smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation it shall lie waste none shall pass through it forever and ever we were just talking about America, were we not? Mm -hmm. And how the Yah, the prophecy of Yah saying that uh, the the people that's heaped into uh, to this nation that it had gathered into itself is going to rise up suddenly and begin to bite or to hurt and to vex this nation. And we are reading, and we are reading where the use of bombs may be used to do that terrorism. Uh, may be used to do that to hurt this uh this country we also read in isaiah 34 where the, where the bible is also here talking about america and the day of yah everybody know what the day of yah's vengeance is right what is the day of yah's vengeance Boy, y'all going to make me do so. What is the day of Yah's vengeance? Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 24. <laughs> I'm going to keep bringing this scripture out till you get it. Matthew 24, to go to verse 30. Let me verse 30 and 31. Let me know, brothers and sisters, when y'all have it. Y'all kind of quiet today. Y'all acting like y'all sleepy today or something. Y'all tired? That rain. That rain? Rain got you tired. Let's go to Matthew 24 and 31. I think I'm going to start at verse 30. Now, we read this scripture before. This is your host, Will Messiah, speaking. We read this scripture plenty of times before. But we're talking about uh, the day of vengeance or Yah's day of vengeance, right? And what's going to happen? Y'all ready? I'm going to start at verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why are they mourning? Because they know they, the, the, their rulership is over. The time for their rulership is over. Right? Verse 30 again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 30. Watch this. This is the, the Yah's recompense right here. And, and he shall send his angels was met a king with with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven unto the other this is when the destruction is coming upon the people of the earth this is why the families of the earth are mourning and and this is the day of yah's recompense right this is the day of yah's Recompense. Let me get one more. One more. One more scripture. I think it's uh Second Thessalonians is the one I want. Second Thessalonians one and six. It was just talking about that recompense, so we just want to go back over it real quick. Second Thessalonians one and six. So I'm gonna start at verse I'm gonna start at verse five. Y'all ready? 
Second Thessalonians, I'm going to start uh, chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 5. Which is the manifested token. It, it is the manifested token of righteous judgment of Yah. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Yah, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yah to recompense tribulation, or to pay back tribulation to them that trouble you. Verse 7, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the, um, when the master Yehoshua shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angel, mighty, mighty Melachim, verse 8, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that knew not Yah and that obeyed not the good news of the master Yehoshua Messiah. This is that vengeance that Isaiah was talking about. Go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 34 and uh, chapter 34, verse 8. Let me read it again. Starting with verse 8. For it is the day of Yah's vengeance and the year of recompense or payback for the controversy of Zion. Yah is the, the Almighty is sending Yahushua the Messiah, our Savior, to deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. Out of the hands of our enemies. And when he do and when he do this, the very next verse tells you what's going to happen to the lands or to to the land or the country that we are in. Understand what I'm saying? Verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. How is that going to happen? What is pitch? Tar. Right? Pitch is tar. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone. What is brimstone? This brimstone is a fiery rock. It's on fire. Something that's on fire, right? Um, and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. That means the, just like the wildfires we have in, what's the name of the, uh, the, the place? Santa Rosa, Rose, California. It's going to be burning pitch just like that. Burning pitch, just like that. <laughs> it shall not be quenched. Watch this in verse 10. It shall not be quenched. That means that fire is never going to be put out. <laughs> Night nor day. You won't be able to put that fire out. That's why I said it was something strange about that fire over there. <laughs> in Santa, is it Santa Rose? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's something strange about that fire. All right, it shall not uh, be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Hi, right. how you doing? The smoke thereof shall go up forever. That was that was strange, wasn't it? The smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation. It shall lie waste, meaning that land shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. The same way, many people have to realize this. And I, and I made a statement, and I'm going to make it again. The men and women of Israel have to learn not to be in fear when speaking truth fear is a sin i'm gonna say it again fear 
is a sin. If Yah tells you to, if Yah called you or directed you to teach, then that's what you should ought to be doing. If you uh, say uh, that you have a responsibility to uh, teach your people, to enlighten your people, uh, and you have, uh, and Yah, Yah has given you uh, uh, understanding enough to be able to convey his message to his people, then that's what you should be doing. You cannot be afraid to speak truth to power. Now, nobody's saying be silly or stupid. Nobody's saying that. Don't be silly or stupid or go on your job talking about all of y'all not making a key. All of y'all going to, you know, <laughs> I can't wait till the Savior come and destroy all you heathens. Nobody's saying that. But what we are, what I am saying is you have to have the wherewithal and the ability to speak truth to power. Be uh, I, the Messiah said to be um, to be wise as a serpent, but be gentle as a as a dove. You have to be wise when you are saying things. The truth hurts when you say things like I said last week. Hey, it's not the worst uh, mass murder in America. That's not true. You have uh, you have mass killings in the American historical record that you can just pull out. Boom, 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 boom. You know, you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid because let me let me say this: a lot of Israelite groups don't believe this, or may not believe this. I don't want to say what they don't believe. They may not believe this. Some may not believe. The same way we was delivered out of the hand of our enemies in Egypt is the same way we're going to be delivered out of the hands of our enemy this time. So did he not, we tell the story about how he delivered us out of the hand of Egypt through the Red Sea and he destroyed Pharaoh and his army. When he destroyed Pharaoh and his army, he put those folks to death. When he destroyed Pharaoh and his army, did he not put them to death? Those people died. Those people were killed. So guess what? Your deliverance this time is not a a, 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 boo, a light come on and y'all all just hold hands and start singing a song no no there's going to be death and destruction when your when your deliverance come death and destruction when your deliverance come the same way he delivered us from the hands of our enemies in Egypt is the same way he going to deliver us out of the hands of our enemy this time. So you might as well get ready. If you can't accept that, you might as well jump out of the truth right now. Because you have to accept the destruction of your enemies in order to receive salvation. That's the way it works. <laughs> That's the way it works. And if you think that this these people are going to willingly give up their kingdom without a fight, then you are out of your mind. What do you think the prayer is about when we pray, thy kingdom come? What are we talking about? We're talking about the transference of power. That's what we're talking about. When you say, you can't wait till the kingdom of, of Yah come up on the earth, you're talking about the transference of power and, and rulership and authority. That's what you're talking about. You're not, you're not talking about, I think many of us get, still got Christian pipe dreams going on. Like we're going to heaven and everybody walking on streets of gold. Or, no, heaven is Yah's throne. That's where the Father dwells. 
our kingdom is going to be right here on earth. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You see that? So like I said before, if you think that people are going to let you have rulership over them without a fight, then you are sadly, sadly mistaken. So let's go to Daniel because we're going to figure out how this thing is going to happen. Let's go to Daniel, Daniel 7, the seventh chapter of Daniel. Are y'all ready? All right, Daniel 7, chapter 25. Verse, uh, Daniel 7, chapter, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think the 7 and verse 25. And he shall speak great words unto the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws he changed how do how do we change times and laws how do how do this man change times and laws one is what he changed the laws on marriage right he changed the laws on marriage he said a man can be with a man a woman can be with a woman and there's no problem with it they can get married hey it's no you know it's just like being a man like a man and a woman getting married they, he thinks to change Laws, do he not? How did he think to change times? He had the the, the new year in uh, the dead of winter when the, when the Bible says that the new year begins in in spring, right? He changed times and he changed laws. He thinks to change times and he thinks to change laws. Let's go back a little bit, and he and then start at the beginning of verse twenty five, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Who is the saints of the Most High? Everybody knows that. And everybody knows the scripture to prove it too, right? Who's the saints of the Most High? Israel. Israel, that's right. Israel is the saints of the Most High. All right? And you can you can see that. We won't go to it, but you can see that in what? Psalms 148 14? Is it 148 and 14? Is it 148 and 14? Okay. 148 and 14. Uh, of Psalms. You can go and prove that and see that the Israelites are the saints of the Most High. All right. Now, um, how do he wear out the saints? How's the saints wear out? Keeping us in slavery. Keeping us in slave. When did he wear us out? In slavery, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Deuteronomy real quick. Deuteronomy 28 48. Real fast. We're running out of time. Real fast. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. This is how he wore us out. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Uh, Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Yah shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and want of all things and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee so he destroyed us in our mind he took the yokes off because we had already been destroyed we had lost our history our heritage our culture we had lost everything so we had already been destroyed us in slavery and think to change times and laws. He changed the, the, uh, uh, the seasons and he changed the laws on marriages and things of that nature. And there, and they shall be given into his hand until a times and a times and the dividing of times. That's 350 years. But the judgment shall sit. But the judgment shall sit. The judgment on destroying this man or this nation shall set. It's going to stand. It's going to stand. Watch this. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. 
and they shall take away his dominion. They meaning who? The saints. That's what we're talking about, right? They shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. Verse 27, and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. So under the whole heaven means where? The whole earth. Under the whole heaven means the earth, right? Y'all still with me? Okay, under the whole heaven means the earth. Um, shall be given to the people. Let me, let me start at verse uh, 27 again, over again. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. All kingdoms and dominions shall serve and obey the Most High, our Yah and our King, Yahushua Messiah. This is the transference of power. And then we just say, and then we just read where it says, and they shall, in verse 26, where it says, and they shall take the dominion. They shall take the dominion. We got too, too many lazy Israelites. They don't want to do nothing. They don't want to teach. They don't want to write. They don't want to do nothing. They just want to sit up and get fed and fat. That's it. Please, somebody teach me. Ooh, give me some new breakdowns. Ooh, give me, tell me some conspiracies. Ooh, please. That's all they want. They don't want to put in no work at all and do anything at all. Those are the kind of Israelites that's not going to be able to take the dominion or the power. To take something means that's an action word, right? What's an action word? You an English teacher? What's the action? What's an action word called? A verb? Is that an action word? <laughs> so to take something is an action word, right? Right? So that's what that's what we that's what it means. Do you have to be in action? You have to move, move your body. Do something. I know it hurts. Do something. That's what the kingdom is going to, that's what we have to do. We have to take the kingdom back from the violent. We read at the top of the lesson, the kingdom of heaven was taken by force. And the violent, the violent ones took it. So you have to be motivated enough to take it back. Take the dominion back. With the, with the power of the Most High, that's what we're going to do. We're almost done. Give me Obadiah 1 and 15. Nah. Huh? Hallelujah. Obadiah 1 and 15. The kingdom given over into our hands, but not without a fight. The kingdom will be given over into our hands, but not without a fight. It originally belonged to us in the beginning, but we broke covenant with Yah. We broke covenant with Yah. And in that fatal move, we destroyed ourselves and lost it all. But Yah has said he will not forget his people. You got, you got it? You got it, Obadiah 1 and 15. He will not 
forget. Forget his people. Let's start at verse 15. For the day of the Yah is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy head. Meaning, what you did is going to be done to you. The killings you've done, the burnings you've done, the hanging you've done, the stabbing you've done, the shooting you've done. The incarceration, the locking up the chains you put up on. Everything that you've done, that's going to be your reward. It's going to come right back upon you. Heathen. <laughs> Verse 16. For as ye have, for as ye have drunk upon my set apart mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continuously. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down. Yeah, you going to drink this recompense and you going to swallow it too. And guess what? And they shall be as though they have not been. Woo! That man, that heathen man, that Edomite man is going to be as though he never was. He never existed. But, uh, but, upon, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Yaakov shall possess their possessions. That's why I went here. Because we just talk about taking dominion, right? You have to, you go, we're going to take something. So right here it says, they use a different word, but it's the same thing. We're going to possess their possessions. Everything they once had, everything they once owned, we're going to take. You know, this don't belong to you. This doesn't belong to you. I'll take that. Verse 18, and the house of Yaakov shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Yah have spoken it, meaning that Esau is going to be non existent. It's going to be a non existent. Uh, group of people. We drop down to 21. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And what? And the kingdom shall be the Yahs. And the kingdom shall be the Yahs. We said it before that the kingdom was given into our hands. The kingdom is going to be given into our hands, but not without a fight. It originally belonged to us, but we broke covenant with Yah. And in that one move, in that one fatal move, we destroyed ourselves and lost it. Lost it all. Oh, but by Yah's mercy, he did not forsake us. I mean, Romans 11 and, Romans 11 and uh, 1. We're almost done. He never left us. We left him. Romans 11 and 1. Romans 11 
Romans 11 and 1, yeah. Chapter, chapter 11, verse 1. And we'll start at verse, verse 1. I say then, have Yah cast away his people? Yah forbid. For I, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yah have not cast his people, or cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot he not what the scripture says of Elias? How he maketh intercession to Yah against Israel, saying, Yah, they have killed thy prophets and dug down thy altars that I am left alone and they seek my life. Verse 4. But what saith an answer of Yah unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Yah has not cast away his people. He has reserved his elect for the day of recompense and for the day of his vengeance. He never left us. It is us who left him. We broke covenant with Yah. We broke covenant with Yah. Two more. Give me. Let me get two more scriptures here. Exodus 19. Then we're done. Exodus 19, I'm going to read verse 5 and verse 6. Are y'all okay? All right. Exodus 19, verse 5 and verse 6. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples. For all the earth is mine. Verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a set apart nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the children of Israel. We broke covenant with Yah. But Yah has called us the apple of his eye. He calls us his kingdom of priests, a set-apart nation, a peculiar people. We're the only nation he calls my people. And the only nation he says he has ever known. He calls us his choice. And his very own elect. He calls us his own. It's time for us to gather ourselves together. And become more of the same mind. More of one body. And I'm, speaking, I'm speaking over the internet. Primarily to the nation of Israel. We need to come together. All of the fighting and bickering amongst our nation, it needs to cease. And we need to come together. One nation. One nation. We are one nation. And I pray that we do so. For if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek the face of Yah, he will hear from heaven and heal our land. Forgive our sins and heal our land. And with that, we say, Shalom, Shalom. Yah bless.